Here's a fun problem. How do you quickly and safely get a throwing knife to stick exactly where you want it to? You could hire this guy, or you could train your main actress how to throw knives, which we did, but we still didn't have the time to get the exact shot we needed. So visual effects came to the rescue here, and today I wanted to share how I put that shot together. So there are about four ingredients to get this to work. First of all, we need to put the throwing knife into the tree exactly where we want it. And an image of that is going to be super handy down the road. Then we're also going to need an image without the knife there. If your camera is on a tripod, that's going to make this a lot easier to get. Then of course, we've got the 3D knife, which honestly could probably be 2D in this situation because it's only moving in two dimensions. And we've also got a mask of the knife that's in the tree. So in the movie clip editor, let's go from the tracking mode to masking mode. Add in a new mask, and let's start by holding control and clicking and dragging. That'll create a handle, and we can work our way all the way around the knife. And when that's complete, I'm going to select everything with A, and then go Alt-S. That'll scale up a feathering distance, and that's going to be really handy to help our clean plate blend in. Now for the knife model and the 3D view, I just made sure I had the camera selected, and in the camera properties, I had background images enabled, and I've got our reference movie clip in there. And I use that as a guide to model the knife. Now this is going to be super motion blurred, but let's make sure we do it right. I'm going to select everything in edit mode, and let's just go U and project from view. And if you've rendered out a freeze frame of this video, then you can just use that as the texture for the knife. At the moment, it's projecting part of the tree on the tip of the knife. So I'm just selecting the last two segments of the knife, going S, X, negative one to scale it backwards, and I'm just putting that over the part of the knife that actually does have texture. That way it looks like a knife should. The material is as simple as it gets. It's just the texture going into an emission, going into the material output, and that just makes sure the values are the same as in the video. Now to animate this thing, you can see I've put a marker on the timeline with M where I want it to hit the tree. Then I hit I to put in a location and rotation keyframe where it ends up finally. Then I just backtracked a few frames put it off camera a little ways, then put in another location and rotation keyframe. Another way to make the motion look better, if you select a knife and then select the keyframes, right click, go into interpolation mode and set that to linear, then it won't slow down before it hits the tree. Right before we get into compositing, we definitely wanna go into the render properties and check motion blur. Okay, so phase one of compositing, we're gonna combine our clean plate and our mask to make kind of like a patch that goes over our live action footage of the knife and that covers it up, kind of makes it look like it's not there. And that's what we have here. We got the footage of the knife, the footage of nothing there. They're both going into a mix node with our mask mixing in the factor. Then when we get to the point in the timeline that we marked, we were going to want to switch the mask with the switch node. And you can see that goes to black and it removes the patch as if the knife has landed there. So if you're shooting at 24 frames per second and you're this zoomed in on where the knife is going to hit, it could be realistic that it just wouldn't be there one frame and then the next frame it would be there. But we want to add a tiny bit of anticipation and that's where our 3D knife comes into play. So downstream of our mix node, we've got an alpha over node and we've also got a render layers node going into that as well. And you can see here, it's pretty blurry. It's a little bit difficult to see. And now we want to make sure that our 3D knife isn't going to be over top of our real knife when that's time for that to do the switcheroonie. So animating the factor node by holding the mouse over and hitting I, we're going to make sure that the factor is at one, the frame before it hits, and then the frame it does hit, make the factor zero. Now I wanted to get some reference footage so I could figure out exactly how this looks. And you can kind of see here why we didn't go for the completely practical no visual effects option because it's just so hard to hit such a precise target in a reasonable amount of time. A great takeaway that I got from this footage is that when a knife hits a tree like this, there's all these tiny little buckles of uh, sawdust. I don't know. It's not a saw. All these little things that just get knocked loose and they go all over the place. And you can actually see them pretty well when it's got bright sun like this. So in the final result, I did end up adding in a little particle system of things that would fly all over the place. I don't think I'll cover it in this tutorial, but yeah, now you know pretty much how to do it. If you stuck around this long, well, first of all, you're cool. Thank you. And second of all, I have this gift for you. It's an asset pack of seamless looping smoke videos. And these are super handy just to throw into a 3D scene, give your scene some atmosphere and some life. And that's just like a thank you from me to you. You can find this pack in a link in the description. But yeah, other than that, I hope you have an excellent day and cheers.